let's say we have a complicated problem like this. We know it's complicated because it's pretty long. So here's the problem. A train leaves for the station. The train accelerates uniformly from rest until it has traveled a third of the total distance to the station. It then travels at constant velocity until it has traveled two-thirds of the total distance to the station. It then decelerates uniformly so that it reaches the station at rest. If the total trip lasts three hours, then how much time did the train spend traveling at constant velocity? This may seem like a pretty challenging problem. After all, we haven't been given many things. But with a little bit of organization, we can easily and quickly solve this problem. So the first thing that we do in any problem, but especially in a challenging problem like this, is write down the givens. Since we have this trip divided into three segments, each of which occurs over equal distance, I'm going to draw a picture. So here is a line representing the total distance, which I will call D. The train starts here and leaves for the station. This trip is split into three segments, and each of those segments is equal in length. Thus, each segment is equal to D over 3. Now, they may not look equal in my drawing, but you can pretend that they are. Imagine. So there's one thing we've been given, and it's in a nice picture like this. We also know that it starts at rest. So I'm going to add that piece of information vi equals zero, right below the segment that it applies to. So this applies to the first segment. I also know that v final is the same as the constant velocity in the second segment. So here's the second segment, which travels at constant velocity. And that VC is the same as V final from the first segment. So I'm going to write that with this equation. So far, so good. We know that VI in this segment, the initial velocity of the third segment, equals VC. It starts in this segment. It starts with this velocity. And then it decelerates until it reaches zero meters per second. Now, we're trying to find the time that it travels at constant, acceler uh, constant velocity. In other words, we're trying to find T2, the time of the second segment. And if we've got T2, we might as well draw in, write in T1 in the first segment and T3, except that T3 is really equal to T1. Why is that true? Well, that's true because the first and third have the same distance, and they have the same initial and final velocity, except they're just switched. And all that means is that the acceleration is positive in this segment and negative in this segment. But otherwise, except for that difference, the negative and positive acceleration, this and this, those two segments, are exactly the same. They have the same time. So I'm going to just use one variable, t1, for each. OK, now that I have my equations written down, I can write some equi uh, sorry, now that I have my givens or variables written down, I can write out some equations of motion. So the first equation I'm going to write is for this segment here. And looking at my variables, what do I have? I have vi, vf, t, and I have uh, distance, which is d over 3. So what do I want to write? Of course, we know the equation that has all of those things is d equals 1 half 
v plus u times t. So I've got vi, which where c is going to be 0, vf times t. And let me be consistent. We'll use s for my distance, use that variable. So when I plug in, I'm going to have d over 3 is 1 half, vi is 0, so that's going to cancel out. vf is equal to vc times t1. Okay, now let's write an equation for the middle segment. What do we have? We have d over 3 is vc times t2, right? Distance equals rate times time. And if I wanted to, I could write a third equation for this segment, but we can see that it's going to be the exact same as what we have here. It's going to be the exact same equation. So I'm not going to spend time writing it out. Okay, so I'm going to write these equations on the next slide, and then we will solve Oh, but before I do, there's one last thing that we know, one last equation we need to write down. We know the total time. In particular, we were told that the total time of the trip is three hours. So three hours equals, well, we could write t total, or we could write t total in terms of t1, t2, and t1. So clearly we can see that the total time is simply t1 plus t2 plus another t1. Oops, t1 plus, I get a little neater handwriting here, plus t2 plus t1. In other words, 3 hours equals 2t1 plus t2. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, so which equations do I want? I am going to rewrite this equation, this equation, and this equation on the next slide. I'm going to rewrite those, and hopefully, from those three equations, I will be able to solve for the unknown, which is t2. So here we go. So there are my three equations from the previous slide. We're trying to solve for t1. So we don't need d. We want to get rid of d. So what I propose doing is setting this equal to this. How can I do that? Well, because this equals d3, and this equals d3, therefore this equals this. So let's write that out. 1 half vc t1 equals d over 3, and d over 3 also equals vc t2. So I'm going to try to solve for t2 which means I want to get rid of T1 and VC. So first let me write out 1 half VC T1. So the first thing I can do is just get rid of VC because there's a VC on each side. So that's great, that's excellent, that's what we want. We want to get rid of it. We still have to get rid of T1 so that we can solve for T2. How will we do this? We are going to plug in for t1 using this equation. So how do we do that? Well, we look at the equation in the top right, this one here, and we see that t1 equals 3 hours minus t2 over 2. We can work that out confirm that that's done, that I've correctly isolated T1 
from this equation. And you should get this. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to use it to plug in right here. All right, so let's do that. When I plug in for T1, I get 1 half, 3 hours minus T2 over 2 equals T2. So to solve for T2, I have to get all of the T2s together on one side. So to do that, I'm going to distribute the 1 half through each of these terms, and I get 3 hours over 4, which is 0.75 hours, minus T2 over 4 equals T2. Now, I can add T2 to both sides so that this T2 cancels out, this T2 over 4, and solve from there. So, when I add T2 over 4 to both sides, I get 3 hours over 4 equals, well, I'm going to have a positive 4 over 4 T2, and then another positive 1 fourth T2, which gives me 5 fourths. And what do we see? We see that this 4 cancels with that 4, which gives us the nice simple equation 3h equals 5t2, or t2 equals 3 fifths, that's 0.6 hours. There it is. And that's our answer. The uh, answer to the question, how long does the train spend in the second interval, is 0.6 hours. We can convert that to minutes or seconds if we wanted but since it gave us the total time in hours, I think it's okay to leave our answer in hours. Now we can see that it would also be really easy, it would be really easy to find T1 now that we know T2. Because this equation would allow us to calculate T1 just by plugging in T2. But since that's not been asked, we're not going to do it now. So there it was, a simple problem. It didn't seem so simple, and there were multiple steps. But what did we do? The first thing we did was write down our givens. And we used a drawing to help us understand which givens fit in with which segment of the trip. Once we wrote down the givens, all we did was look at those givens and write down an equation of motion that used those givens for each segment of the trip. Once we had our equations, it was simply a matter of using those three equations, one, two, three, to solve for our answer. That was just a little bit of algebra. So there it is.